YouTube, everyone's favorite weapon tester, Blinken, back with another video. In today's video, I bring you my top five long range weapons in season five. So we saw quite a few changes to weapons in the season five update. So I'm going to bring you again, my top five long range options. All of these are tested by myself. Uh, as you see in my short form content, I build my weapons out for bullet velocity, average TTK, recoil control, ADS speed, mobility. I factor all that in when I when I build my weapons. So uh, I'm not partial to any attachments. I try pretty much every single attachment, uh, both in the firing range and in game to come up with the best builds or what I think are the best builds. So without further ado, I'm gonna go through those. If you do enjoy this kind of content, be sure to like the video, subscribe with notifications turned on as always, share the video with a friend, and leave a comment below letting me know what you like or what you don't like about the video or me. Appreciate you all for the love. Hope to see you in the next one. Much love. So quickly, as always, before I get into the builds, I just want to go through some of the stats and data behind these long range weapons. As you can see, the TTK on paper, um, starting with the signal 50, which is the lowest, extremely low. Obviously, it's a, a two tap weapon, uh, so that's going to be very fast. And the drop off uh, is going to be around 70 meters where the bullet velocity does slow down a little bit, uh, but in my testing, I was still getting two hit downs with this, but I had to hit one headshot. Um, so if you do hit that one headshot, that still stays at a 540 millisecond TTK, which is absolutely broken at long range. Uh, coming in next would be the Seiken MG38, which is an LMG. Um, the Seiken is a really good long range option right now. Almost has no recoil. And the TTK and mobility are so good, I don't know that it's getting enough attention. If you remember back in season two, I believe it was meta for a short period of time. Uh, and I, I honestly think that it would be meta again if we were talking about it a little more. So give the Seiken a shot. It's absolutely broken when it comes to the TTK. Obviously, the damage per mag is off the charts. The mobility is decent. The only thing that hinders it, obviously, is the reload speed. But you can work around that. Uh, I saw Warzone Loadouts tweeted about this recently. So I do think that's going to come into popularity a little bit. Uh, then next would be the TAC-V, which is the next long range king, in my opinion. Uh, I've been rocking it a lot in ranked. It feels really good. Very low recoil. Uh, contrary to popular belief, it doesn't have that much recoil. Uh, then we get into the Cronin Squall after the nerf, obviously. On paper, you're looking at a 979 millisecond TTK at 50 meters. So it did take a fairly significant nerf, as you've seen in my short form content. And then the two ARs that I'll be talking about in the video, the ISO Hemlock, which I think, in my opinion, right now is the best AR because there's absolutely zero recoil. You're going to be hitting those shots at long ranges. It's, it's a laser beam. And then the M13, also a laser beam, has a very good competitive TTK. Might be a little bit better in Resurgence. Uh, but we will get the builds for all of these here shortly. So right now, coming in at that number one spot for my top five long range options, I personally think it's the TAC-V. Uh, so I know a lot of people talk about the TAC-V having a little more recoil than some of the other weapons. And I will say it's a little bit more high skill, but I'm going to give you a quick demo in the firing range here. I really don't think this is hard to control at all. So for this build, we're rocking the Tempest GH50, which gives it maximum vertical recoil control. Tuning that for recoil stabilization and recoil control. The 18-inch precision 6 barrel, tuned for recoil steadiness and ADS speed. FTAC Ripper 56 underbarrel, tuned for recoil stabilization and aim idle stability. 50 round mag, and then the AMOP V4 with, really quick, I want to show you the skin here the heliotrope which comes on the good old days bundle for the iso hemlock gives you that purple dot which i think is extremely clean kind of cool looking know what i mean uh, for that tuning we're going ads speed and far eye position so really quick i'm just gonna do a quick demo in the firing range because first of all the, mo the mobility on this is not bad at all and it's pretty much it shoots straight it shoots really straight um I don't, I don't find this hard to control. It does have a little bit of initial recoil, but once you kind of dampen that initial recoil, it's pretty much straight vertical. 
Now this is without controlling it. I'm just going to show the recoil pattern. As you can see, it's for the most part straight vertical. It does have some bounds, but that is not a hard pattern to control at all. So I've been loving the TAC-V. Uh, I've been rocking it in ranked. We had a couple, couple, couple rank grinds that got us over a thousand SR. Um, it just feels really good. So give the TAC-V a try. Obviously, there's some other options that are a little bit maybe easier to control. Uh, but I'm having no issues controlling this, peeling guys off headies, and doing insane damage. So coming in at my second spot, believe it or not, after two nerfs, is the Cronin Squall. The average TTK being between, you know, right around 900 milliseconds, just a little bit slower than the Tac V, but it's honestly a laser beam. It's not hard to control at all. You're going to hit your shots, and it has really good bullet velocity and really good range. So for this build... Again, we're going with the Tempest GH50 muzzle, tuned for recoil stabilization and recoil control. HR 6.8 barrel, tuned for recoil steadiness and ADS speed. On this particular build, hidden behind my face here, is the Saken ZX grip, which gives it additional recoil control. We're tuning that for recoil steadiness and aim idle stability. Then the 50 round mag, and then the heliotrope. Variation variant on the AMO PV4 optic tune for ADS speed and far. So coming in at my third best long range option right now is actually a sniper, which I don't normally do this. However, the Signal 50 is almost too good not to mention in the top five long range weapons. So this is currently a two tap, two chest shots, uh, chest and a head shot, chest and a torso shot. It's going to down an enemy in around between 600 and 670 milliseconds practical TTK. On paper, it does have a little bit faster of a TTK, so you can hit and kill faster. And the beautiful thing about this is if you're end game with the Signal 50 and there's people obviously rotating, not fully plated, you can potentially one-shot headshot them. Uh, so it's, it's incredibly OP. Out of all the sniper rifles, it has the best bullet velocity. It's not a one-tap. So that's the reason people aren't talking about it as much in pubs, but in rank, this is absolutely insane. And even in pubs, it's still a two tap. So I have two different builds to go through. Uh, all of them are going to be the same with the exception of the optic. So for the muzzle, we're going the Nilsound 90 silencer tuned for ADS speed, bullet velocity. Barrel, we're going with the 29 inch TV Kilo 50 barrel tuned for recoil steadiness and ADS speed. I want the FSS OLEV laser. For increased mobility and tuning that for aim walking steadiness and aim idle stability. The 50 cal high velocity ammo tuned for recoil smoothness and bullet velocity. And then here's where the build varies a little bit. The Schlager night view is insanely good and it's not banned in rank so you can use it in rank. Obviously it allows you to see non cold blooded enemies through smoke. Tuning this for ADS speed and I left the eye position neutral. And then the other optic that we're going to be running, uh, if we don't go with that, is the, oops, sorry, is the Forge Tech Delta 4. And I tune this particular optic for flinch resistance and fire. I go flinch resistance over ADS speed because I, I tend to feel like with the thermal, you're a little more discreet when you're sniping. It's just it's just my opinion. So I tuned this one for flinch resistance rather than ADS speed. Uh, I just posted a short form video on this. The ADS speed is, is extremely good for a large caliber sniper. Uh, the mobility is not terrible. The reload speed is a little bit slow. But again, it's a two tap. You're going to kill your enemy faster than any fully auto weapon in the game right now. Uh, and it's, it's very good both in ranked and in pub. So give this a try. So next up, we have the only LMG that I have on my on my list. And again, call this the top five long range option. It's really the top six when you include the Signal 50 in here. Uh, but I can't not include this LMG. So again, Warzone, as I mentioned in the stats, Warzone loadouts did just tweet about this uh, as I'm making this video. But the Saken MG38 has an insanely fast TTK at pretty much all ranges. The mobility on it feels more like a battle rifle than an LMG. So it is a little bit, it's even fat. It feels more like an AR, honestly, with the exception of the reload speed. So find ways to work around the reload speed. This is an absolute slapper of a build. 
and could be meta. So for my build, I'm rocking the Polar Fire S muzzle, tuned for recoil smoothness and aim idle stability. The 20 inch Bruin Silver Series barrel, tuned for recoil steadiness and ADS speed. Cronin WL55 under barrel, tuned for recoil stabilization and aim idle stability. I throw on the 762 high velocity ammo, tuned for damage range and recoil steadiness. However, you can tune, the, uh, actually drop the ammunition and throw on the FSS OLE V laser for increased mobility, and you can tune the aim walking speed and ADS speed on that. Uh, it, it feels a little bit sharper, a little bit crisper, a little bit quicker. Uh, but I, I prefer to have the high velocity ammo on my build. And then we're going with the AMOP V4 optic tune for ADS speed and far eye position. And now getting into the ARs within the top five or the long range meta, there are two ARs that I personally think stand out and one that might potentially surprise you is the ISO hemlock. So I was using the ISO hemlock the other night and ranked. Uh, my buddy Frylog recommended that, that I use it. Obviously, the ISO Hemlock has been very good in terms of recoil control over the last several seasons, but after using the Cronin Squall and the TAC-V for the most part of the last two seasons or the SO-14, I really do feel like the ISO is, it's almost impossible to miss shots. You're going to be hitting your shots across the map, 100, 150, 200 meters, and it's got good range for an AR. So highly recommend rocking the ISO Hemlock if you enjoy ARs, better mobility, uh, a little bit easier to control than some of the other battle rifles. For this build, we're going with the Harbinger D20 muzzle, tuned for ADS speed and bullet velocity. The Fielder T50 barrel, tuned for recoil steadiness and damage range. FTAC Ripper 56 under barrel, tuned for recoil stabilization and aim idle stability. 45 round mag, and then the Aim OP V4, tuned for ADS speed and far. And last but not least, coming in at number five is another AR, and it is the M13. A lot of people love the M13. A lot of people hate the M13. I personally love the M13. It's very good in resurgence. Obviously, with the fire rate being as fast as it, as it is, it's a little more unforgiving at longer ranges, but it has the second fastest TTK on paper out of all the ARs behind the cast-off 7.62, uh, and it's a laser beam. It's It's... It's the M13, it's easy to control. We love it, we use it, we need it in our life. Okay, tuning this uh, Harbinger D20 muzzle for recoil smoothness and bullet velocity. 14 inch Bruin Echelon barrel, tuned for recoil steadiness and damage range. The FTAC Ripper 56 under barrel, tuned for recoil stabilization and aim idle stability. 60 round mag, which is a little bit nicer than some of the smaller mags that you get on ARs. And then the Amo PV4 Heliotrope variant again, tuned for ADS speed and far. So that wraps up my top five long range options. Hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, be sure to like it and subscribe with notifications turned on so you never miss any of my content surrounding loadouts, weapons, testing, COD updates, news, etc. Appreciate you all. Much love and I will see you in the next one.